Good morning. Welcome to our Fujitsu training series. Um, I think this is number six of our training series to this uh, month. So today we're going to talk about Fujitsu Wi-Fi. We're going to go through some installation and troubleshooting. Uh, before we start, you guys have a little handout section. I threw in our Wales Derby line sheet there. You're going to find contacts for us in the back. Um, you're also going to find a 2021 brand new catalog, Fujitsu catalog. So definitely grab them before you leave today. Um, also, if you can throw in a chat, we got Rob Clemens here with me today. He's going to be answering any questions you may have. Just throw in a chat that you can hear us loud and clear and see everything. Um, we've got a couple pieces of equipment we're going to kind of show off today, some modules that you know that we're, you might be used to, some new stuff that's come out. So not too long today, but some great information. Just make sure everything works, click up, perfect. So today we're going to cover these modules you see on the screen today. We got some new ones there that you might not be familiar with. We have the FGL Air and TSIS Home. Those are the two Fujitsu, well, FGL Air is Fujitsu's own Wi-Fi. Then we have our Intesis Home, which is a third party company. So we're gonna go through a couple of these modules as you can see on the screen. There's a couple different um, configurations, I guess you could say we can, that we're gonna go with when we talk about Wi-Fi. So we'll go through each one of them, how to connect it, how to install it, troubleshoot it if we have to down the road. Uh, but when we talk about you know going into Wi-Fi, one of the biggest things I think we find is maybe not being able to connect to it. We wanna make sure before we start selling and talking about Wi-Fi that we do have a connection you know, near the equipment, you know, like the head unit we have here to my left, to your right. Uh, we wanna make sure we can see a signal before anything starts. So that's where we're gonna to start today is talk about some of the challenges we see is Wi-Fi signal challenges. You know, for some of us, it might be distance, right? So depending on a building, whether it's commercial, residential, construction, you know, there's things that can get in the way of that signal. If we're talking commercial, we might be talking about metal construction, metal beams, stuff like that, that cuts down that Wi-Fi signal. Some houses, depending on the size of the home we're looking for and how many units we're connecting to, distance might be a big challenge for us, right? So we need to know the power of that router, the power of the signal, right? That can be a big challenge. The other thing we kind of run into too is how many devices. Everything today seems to be Wi-Fi, right? So we have, we've seen phones, obviously the phones, the laptops we use today, smart TVs, you name it. We got light switches that are Wi-Fi, light bulbs, tablets. Everybody's got probably five or six of them in the home, fire TVs. So you can see here, we're always, we have some fun with this myself and um, I think Anthony Tassi, you guys all know, we kind of go back, what is the latest and greatest when it comes to Wi-Fi? What We got crock pots that are Wi-Fi now, faucets that can, we can control the water that comes out of them, cameras. So all of this stuff adds up to a system. And now we're trying to hook up our Fujitsu Wi-Fi. That's gonna be one of the biggest challenges we have is how many devices are there cluttering up that Wi-Fi signal. So if you guys are not familiar, I don't have my phone on me right now, but we have this mobile technician app. So if you guys are familiar with this with troubleshooting Fujitsu units, whether it's an error with the system, we can also utilize this app as a Wi-Fi analyzer. Um, I think currently it is only good for Android users. There are many different analyzers out on the market, whether you go to bestbuy.com, they have an analyzer on there. But you'll see on the screen here, we have a little graph. And when we, when we activate that graph, it takes a couple minutes to search for signals, but now we can see all the signals in that network. So we're looking for that homeowner or building owner's signal on that little screen. And then looking at all these little triangles and signal strength, you know, we're not, I'm not an IT guy, but I need to know a little bit about how strong a signal is or how weak a signal is. You know, and when you see something like you see on the left-hand side there with all of those, let's see if I can get this laser pointer to work. There we go. When you see the left-hand side of the screen here, there's a lot of different signals mixed up on this one channel. So if I had my Fujitsu Wi-Fi on that channel, there, there could be a, a challenge there. There could be some issues with connectivity. Uh, maybe it works for a couple of weeks and then it drops off the more people use those different devices. Um, we want to look, if you look at that red triangle, that's by itself. It's on a channel all alone. You're probably not going to have many issues there. And that's something we want to look for. And, and typically what I would do is take that phone with the app right that, put it next to the Fujitsu head unit, and let's see if we can find the homeowner's internet. If we can't find their network name, and we might well have to ask them what is what do they call their network? A lot of it could be the subscriber, it could be a FIOS, it could be a uh, Optimum, whoever they have. 
you're going to look for that signal and you want to go next to each indoor unit that you're going to hook up Wi-Fi to and make sure we have a strong signal, nice and clear, right? And then we can talk about selling them. If you're curious, you know, what is a good Wi-Fi signal? This is something I pulled off a website, Wi-Fi Central. Um, if you look here right in the middle there, minus 67, that seems to be a good internet signal. Anything to the left as we go down to down to minus 30, the lower the number, the stronger the signal gets. So we want to get, you know, somewhere around that minus 60, 67 range, and we'll have, you know, good confidence that that signal is going to work right there in our indoor unit. So then the next step is going to come device selection. We know we got Wi-Fi, we can sell the homeowner there. What, what device am I going to use? You know, and a lot of it comes down to features. You know, maybe it's the app. You know, we have, like I said, we have Intesis Home, which is a third party. It's made for pretty much every manufacturer out there. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to confine to every little feature that we can do with Fujitsu with their with our remote controls, like this guy here. When we open up the door, we have a lot of little selections there. You know, we're able to do powerful mode, change louvers, stuff like that. So we want to make sure if that's something they want to use, we want to make sure we pick the right app, whether it's Intesis or FGL Air, and we can control them. So this is right out of your 2021 catalog. So I took a little screenshot there of it. You'll see the modules that we had in that opening slide there. You'll see them all across the top. And there's a couple different ways where some units come built in. They'll have already have the device out of the box in the head unit, so you don't have to do anything but hook it up to the network. Some other units will have to add a little module like this guy here. So looking on the screen there, you can see everything that yellowish color is going to be our FGL Air, so Fujitsu Zone. Everything in the, everything in that blue section is going to be in Tisa's home. So both great devices, depending on features again and how many units maybe we have. So we have to take a look at that. And then you're going to find underneath the units what all those features what can it do you know so it gives you a little brief summary on what we're looking for so maybe one has something that the homeowner is looking that the other doesn't so that's going to be an easy sell right there we know what module we need um, when we go to the next sheet here and we go down on that page you're going to see the compatibility so now we got to know okay what model indoor unit do i have what can i hook up to it we want to pay attention let me see if i can get in here with the laser pointer again you want to pay attention to some of these model numbers where you see these little ones, twos, maybe sixes and sevens when we get over here. And then we want to look down and they might require something we call an interface kit. It might might require a another Molex plug that we got to hook up to the unit. Right. So we just want to pay attention to what are those little add ons I need. You know, something like this indoor unit here. I may need an interface kit. So that's that's a little board that allows me to hook up my Wi-Fi to. It's going to plug in right here in this little void and we'll look at that once we get into the interface kits but we just want to pay attention to what those extra pieces are we don't want to show up with just a wi-fi module and not be able to hook it up there so now fgl air like i said before we can do this as an add-on we can add a device on like you see on the bottom left or we have a unit that had it built in so we had our early um i guess the first series you can say we had was the rls3 line if you added a Y to the end, that meant that it had built-in Wi-Fi. If it didn't have the Y, that means it doesn't mean we can't put it, it just means we have to get an add-on device and plug it in. So that was pretty simple. The newest addition, the LZASs, that took over the RLS3 line, that is also built-in Wi-Fi. You can see the little card there. It's a USB card that plugs right into the top right corner. So that, that's a good image there, a little flip-up door. You're going to pop that open, slide in. It's a little USB card, so it makes it real simple. And then we just got to connect it to the uh, homeowner's network. Some of the main features of FGL Air, uh, basically you're going to get every feature that that unit can do out of the box with the remote control, you're going to be able to do with the app. So you're going to get all of your powerful, your fan speeds, your operation, set temps, um, email notifications, error display, a lot of that stuff, even maintenance warnings. Uh, you can do 24 indoor units or 24 single systems to one app. So one account. So if you have one account, you log in and register, you could hook up 24 systems to it. I don't know if you have a need to, but you can do it. Installer setting is really nice. If you set it up for the homeowner, which I always like, and we'll talk about that at the install side of it. But when you set this up and you have it running on the app, you can actually go through and do a test run. You can go through and set function settings. So that's one thing we can't do with Intesis. We can't get into the function settings. But again, if that's something that I need and I want access to, maybe it's a commercial account, I have access, 
I can set function codes that I don't even need to be on site. So that's another benefit to this. And then of course we got our smart home stuff, our Alexa and all of that stuff. So very easy, we can talk to a device and tell it to turn our air conditioning on, which is pretty cool. Matisse's home gives us a lot of different uh, abilities here. We got IR on the top left over there, meaning that it's, it's a line of sight item. It's gotta be within 20 feet of, of the actual indoor unit. It's gonna utilize that same IR signal that shoots from the remote control. So it has something, Maybe a nice, uh, maybe not the nicest looking thing out there, but again, it's going to be line of sight. And then we got a plug in, looks like a phone charger almost. This is going to be visible. So that might be something that homeowners don't want to see. So we're just going to keep that in mind. And then to the right there, we got the couple new modules. The original wired control was our Antesis home remote that came with our antenna. All right. So this would get mounted either in the indoor unit or possibly above it, you know, somewhere around the unit. It can sense temperature, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Um, the newer devices, you can see to the right, we eliminated the antenna, makes it a little bit easier to hide. Uh, doesn't have to be right out in the space, which is nice. Definitely a strong signal is needed to get, get that um, connection for, you know, worry free. And then we have the newer device, the FJAC up on top there. That's gonna be compatible with our newer equipment, like our multi-positional air handler our RGLX system, stuff like that, so NALCs. Again, some of the features, we can turn the unit on, we can schedule times, we can get email alerts, um, basic operation, you know, there are some different features there. There's a global thing, so it's everybody's, you know, equipment that it works with. So we might not have every feature that F uh, Fujitsu or FGLR can do. We can do group control with this. This was another great reason to have the Intesis is if I wanted to hook up a wired remote control and still have the Wi-Fi, I could piggyback the wires and I have no issues. I could actually do about 16 units um, and I could also do 50 devices, so 50 indoor units to one account. So again, I don't know, 25 was a lot, 24 I think it was, 50 is even more. I don't know if we'll ever need that. And it also worked with an app, you can see in the bottom right there, IFTTT. This is a third party app which works with other apps basically as I can control my my Fujitsu by geo something called geofencing. So on my app, I can have a location set and a perimeter around my home, maybe a two mile perimeter. If I'm within that, it'll activate my Fujitsu. When I go outside that two mile circle, it'll shut it down or turn it off or whatever we want it to do. So a lot of different things we can do with that. Um, we'll go a little bit further here. So again, this is the newer design, the AC cloud, working with the newer equipment, same features, same app, all of that doesn't change. So they cleaned it up a little bit, but connection's a lot easier with these as well, which we'll look at in a few minutes. And you'll see here at the bottom of the page, what are those compatible units? What can we hook the newer, newer Intesis modules up to? So we just wanna be sure that the piece that we're picking or the uh, module we're picking is adaptable to the indoor or outdoor unit. Before I go forward, I don't know if I had it in here. Yeah, you can see uh, this uses what they call a UART plug. So everything in before might have been a hard wire, a Molex plug. You know, what they're using now is basically a little USB. A little difficult to see here, but it's a small little plug. Again, we'll get into that when we do some of the installation stuff, but it's already built into the, the equipment here. You're going to have a harness that just clicks in, so there's no screws, no wires that we got to run. Everything comes with the module itself, which makes installation a lot easier. All right, and interface kits. So again, like I said in the beginning, when we pick a device, we need to know what do I need to complete the installation? You know, with some units like the Intesis Home, we're gonna be running like a thermostat wire. We can't just hook up a thermostat wire to an interface kit. We're gonna need a plug, a Molex plug that has some pigtails here. We're gonna use, like we've always said in the past, we're not gonna use uh, wire nuts. So we're gonna use solderless fittings, crimp fittings. We're gonna crimp our wires onto that plug that'll plug right into our interface kit. So if we're looking here, there's two different types. Typically all your smaller units, meaning your sevens, nines, twelves, and fifteens are gonna need that, that interface. Anything above that 15, when we get into the 18, the 24s, cassettes, ducted models, they all have terminals that we actually gonna hook up to or they'll have the plug already on the board. So it makes install a lot easier. If you've never seen the interface kit before, you always want to follow the instructions that come with the interface kit, not just the indoor unit or the Wi-Fi manual. So we want to get to the portal. It does come with the interface kit, but 
If you want to read it beforehand, jump on the portal. You can look in accessories. If you know the model number of the interface kit you're looking for, you can plug it in here on the portal. It's going to bring up the kit, and then you're going to find all the documentation as far as installation and stuff like that um, that you can print out, bring it with you, read it beforehand, get familiar with it, make, make your installation a lot easier when you're, when you're pulling this thing apart. You know, these are the common configurations you are going to see. And if you look here, this is going to, as an example, we're using one of the larger units, the 18. This is an 18 RLB. So it doesn't have to be model specific, just an 18 in general typically will have that plug on there. So you can see we're utilizing that Wi-Fi plug. So that's that little plug I was holding here. And we're going to use a Intesis home module. So this I'm going to run a thermostat wire. I'm going to screw the thermostat wires inside here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to actually use those solderless connections to attach my Wi-Fi plug and we plug it right into the board. So I need two pieces to continue to make this installation work. If I wanted to go with the FGL Air setup, then I'm just going to utilize this device that already has the plug on it. So now with an 18 or 24, it makes it real simple. I buy this Wi-Fi module, I plug it in a board, I connect it to the homeowner's network and we're good to go. So not, not very difficult. When we get into the smaller units, like I said, there's a great example. You can kind of see that board down here. So you can get that laser pointer. There we go. So that board down there, there's your interface kit. It's coming back with a white harness that plugs into the middle of the board. So that's going to connect the two of them. And then we're going to plug that UTY Wi-Fi plug, or we're going to plug that FGL Air module directly into that board. And that's how we're going to complete that installation. Again, these little voids that you see here in this little section, this is where our fan motor is located. That board's going to fit directly in there. It's got the clips already there. So we're just going to plug that board right in and then run our wires through the channel. Installation is pretty simple once we get this cover off and expose it. So if we're doing this after the, after the fact, after the, the unit's been mounted or installed for weeks, whatever the case is, it's easy to do. What I do find a lot of guys do if they're going to install it right from the get-go from the brand new installation, they'll pull this head apart and install the board and install the module and then put the cover back on before they even get on site just to limit some of the time it takes to install. Some of the do's and don'ts, you know, when we're talking about this FGL Air module, again, I said before, we like the Antesis because we can piggyback remote controls. FGL Air, currently we can't do that. Um, I believe there's some changes coming where we will be able to do that, but as of right now, we can't. So a single system, we want every single unit that we want to have Wi-Fi on has to have its own module. So we're not going to have three units, one module, and hook it up. If we wanted to do something like that, we could, but it would have to be within TSIS. So FGL Air, you can see here, it's a one-to-one. -one. Each indoor unit has it. If you look at the don'ts on the right-hand side there, can't piggyback it, can't group control. We don't want junction box, just like anything else. You know, we don't want to have those connections split. You know, we want to have a nice solid connection. We got a decent amount of wire here. So this does not have to be in the space. It can be installed inside the head unit if we can get it in there. Um, what I find a lot of guys do is they kind of route, route that wire inside the top of the unit and just lay it on top of the return. It does not sense temperature, so it does not have to be in the space. Um, it is a small little mo module here, so it doesn't hurt if you do mount it to the side. If we get some complaints, maybe because of the LEDs that we do show, the homeowner has the ability to go into the app and shut those LEDs off. If that's going to happen, though, I would, I would highly recommend that inside of that filter door, maybe putting a note to the next technician that goes there. He understands that the lights are off because it's the app. They, they turned it off in the app and it's not, this device is not bad because there's no LEDs. So we have had that happen once or twice. So make the note, save yourself a lot of trouble in the, in the uh, future. All right, connection. So connection's uh, pretty simple with both of these. Um, we have two options. We can do this manually, or we can do what they call a, a button mode. So if anybody's familiar with their routers at home, there's a WPS button, it's a connection button. We can utilize that. Me personally, I like doing it manually because I know I'm getting a good connection. So you can see here, we're gonna launch that app. We're gonna go in and we're gonna actually register. And this is something I like to do. Get your email, uh, the email address from your homeowner. Get it first before you even get on site. Create an app form. Make sure they confirm their email. This way you have access to it. You know, make up a password form. And now you have access to it when you get on site. You can hook it up, set it up. You know, if they never change the password, that's better better for you because if you're out outside, maybe it's a rooftop, 
you have access to their Wi-Fi if you remember the password they gave them. You know, you can't steal any information from it, so it's pretty secure. All you can do is turn their AC on or off. So let's say they don't pay, then it might be a good thing for you. But um, we go into the different modes here. Like I said, we got manual and automatic. So we're going to use here, I believe we're using, let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. Magnifier don't work on this guy, huh? Uh, That's okay. We'll get to the laser side here. So we're going to select that manual mode there in step four. On the left-hand side here, you're going to see this is for Android right now. So we're going to get in here. We're going to select the unit that we're using. So on the actual unit, it's going to have a name. So you'll be able to find this in the homeowner's Wi-Fi too. It'll tell you the device name. It'll actually tell you what it's an SSID is what they refer to. So in this one, it says ACUTY. So I know that's my Fujitsu module. I'm going to connect to it. There is a pin number that comes on here on the label. So you're going to enter that pin number. It's going to connect. And then you're now going to go be able to go into the app. And you can see here, we're going to actually, before we get into the app, I'm sorry, we're going to go and find the homeowner's network. And then we're going to put their password in for the network. We're going to connect. We're going to see some light sequence back and forth. And then we should be connected. So that, it's pretty simple. Very similar if we're using uh, iOS. We're just going to get into our networks a little bit differently. That's really the only change. Depends on your phone or tablet or whatever you're using. But we're just going to we're going to get to the device, connect the device to the internet first. Then we can connect to the homeowner's internet, and then everything will be synced, and we can add it into the actual um, app afterwards. So we'll look at that in a minute. I think I went yeah, so we went a little bit quicker. That's okay. So you'll see those light sequences there. So you can see this button that I'm pointing to with the little red circle. Um, that's basically what that's going to be is if I need to deregister this unit or unregister, however you want to say it, um, maybe the homeowner moved, it's a new homeowner, um, they lost their pad, they couldn't get in the app, whatever the case is, maybe they had to replace the module itself, we might have to re-initialize the system. So by holding that button down, that circle there for 10 seconds, it's basically going to wipe it out and put it into like a brand new state. You're going to get the, the flashing light. And then we can reconnect to the system again or to the network. This happens mostly when a homeowner gets a new, maybe a new uh, network, meaning they went to a different provider, they get a new router, a new modem, and they have to reconnect to it. We're going to have to reset it and initialize again. And pretty simple to do. If you have any problems, please reach out to myself, Rob, anybody here in the contractor services group. We can definitely help you with that. In TSIS, again, we can piggyback. So you've seen in this diagram out of their installation manual. This is the older one. There are still plenty of them around with the um, the antenna that you'll see, right? Um, basically, same thing as hooking up a wired remote control. We got our RWB terminals. We're gonna color code them. We can piggyback them right onto the um, the um, either it's a cassette ducted unit or whatever piece of equipment we'll hook it up to. The only thing we gotta worry about is dip switches. So you can see here, default, all my switches are off. What I have to do if I'm using this as a, you know, just Wi-Fi or I'm, I'm using both, I'm utilizing the remote control and the Wi-Fi is I got to pick which one's going to be the master, which one's going to be the slave. So I got to go in there and actually, die, you know, designate which one. You can see by turning, if there is a remote control present, and you can see here, let's see if we can get that laser on there for you. I hit the wrong button again. There we go. So you can see here, Fujitsu RC is present. So Fujitsu remote control is present. So that's gonna make the Wi-Fi device a slave. We have to turn that number two dip switch in the on position. If we do not have a remote control present and we're just using the Wi-Fi, then I gotta turn on number two and four. So it's pretty simple to do. We wanna do this all while there's power off. Um, what you'll find is you'll still be able to connect this device to the internet and get it on the app, but you will not be able to control it. So if you get into that position where you're getting an error, there's no communication, it's most likely because you forgot to do the dip switches. You're going to shut off power at the disconnect. You're going to set those dip switches, repower, and you'll have full control on the app. Um, the connection process with Intesis is a little bit different with the older module. Once we have it all set up and wired, dip switches is set, we're going to open up a browser and we're going to go to IH Config, as you can see at the top there, Intesis Home Config. It's going to bring up the website. We can then hit out automatic or manual setup. You're going to get pointed here to the next screen where it's going to show you the devices. And again, it's just pretty much the same process as the FGL Air. But in this case, we're going to pick the uh, device we're using. We're going to connect to it. Uh, once we connect, we'll be able to get find the homeowner's network, put in their password, and then we're going to go through a little light sequence. 
It's gonna look something like this. It's gonna start with a blinking green light. It's gonna to go to yellow. It might go back and forth. It might go to red, then back to yellow, you know, and then back to red again. So you just wanna watch those lights kind of flashing. At the end, once everything is connected, that light should shut off 100%. Once it's off, you're good to go. Now we can connect it to the app, which we'll look at in a second. So here we go. So again, if you create that account before you get on site, it saves a lot of time. It also gives you the ability to kind of go through that app and customize it the way you want for the homeowner, um, meaning you can put your information in. So when there is an error code, it will pop up with your information, your phone number, and the error code. So they know to call you. Um, you can also set maintenance uh, reminders. So we have, if you remember from our other trainings, we have function codes to do maybe a filter light. But with this, I can actually set a time frame. I can set a time frame, you know, every six months, I want that customer to call me. So every six months on schedule, you know, their, that homeowner is going to get an email notification that they need to call you for maintenance. So I think that's a great feature with the Intesis Home and the FGL Air. But you're going to see here in step 8B, they label it as, there's a lot of, a lot of letters and numbers we got to remember. All of these letters and numbers are on either the box that you bought the Wi-Fi with, and do I have one? I don't have one here. Um, I left that part at home. But on the box, you're going to find that. You're also going to find that on the manual. There's a sticker on the manual here. There's on the back of the device itself, uh, inside cover, you know, back of the module. So I always take a picture with my phone before I start you know, installing things. So I have those numbers saved, right? So there's multiple different areas where you're going to find this. I believe it's a 20 or 25 digit uh, code. Looking at it now, yeah, it looks like I think it's 25 digits, letters and numbers. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to connect and verify it. Once it sees it, you get the OK. If you have multiple devices, you'll be able to add them at that time. And then once you have them added, as long as those dip switches are set, you'll be able to connect and uh, control your system without an issue. Um, one of the nice things also with the Intesis Home, unlike the FGL Air, it actually has a thermistor inside here. This thermistor is not going to control the system, right? But the thermistor itself is going to sense the ambient temperature and it's going to report that to the app, as you can see here on the screen. So if, if I have this in an attic, we might be getting a false reading as far as ambient temperature. It's still not a controlled te you know, temperature. It's the controls all coming from the thermistor in the indoor head but for the indoor cassette or ducted model, but we're gonna get a reading on the app that's gonna tell us maybe it's 130 degrees. So if that's the case and we still have that wired remote control present, what we wanna do is we can get into the function codes again, 42 and 48, I believe. So if that says Rob, it's real small looking up here. So 42 and 48, I believe they come default zero, zero. We wanna set them for zero, one. And that's going to basically shut off the thermistors on the indoor head as well as the Intesis module. And we're just going to utilize the thermistor inside our remote control, right? So that's definitely something we want to do if we're dealing with cassettes or ducted models. Uh, the newer module, like I said, you know, this one has our antenna hookup on the top here. So this was needed with the newer device. We don't have an antenna anymore. So the, the Wi-Fi um, capabilities of this module is a lot better. We don't need that signal. Um, you know, we do have some dip switches we have to set, just like the other one. We can still piggyback. You can see that on a blown up screen there. And if you look at that dip switch number one, this is what we're going to set. Before it was two and four. Now it's just one. That's the only one we have to touch. And that's one is either going to be for no Fujitsu remote control. Zero is going to be Fujitsu remote present. So. Default, I believe, was zero, correct? Yep, zero is default. So it's basically saying there is no Fujitsu remote control. If that's the case, you don't have to do anything. So all you got to do is power this thing up and connect to the network. So it makes things a lot simpler. Uh, connection methods, again, just like the FGL Air, we don't, or I, I'm sorry, the earlier model, the one with the antenna, instead of having to go into an IH config website, they definitely changed things for the easier route. Okay, so now we open up that app. We don't have to log into it right away. If you look here, it says device configuration. So let me hit that. There we go, and the little gray. We're gonna open that, click on that right there. The next screen's gonna just confirm with us, do you have a solid green light on a device? We should. If it is, then we can hit next. And now it's gonna locate the device. We're gonna connect to it. And then from there, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hook up to the homeowner's uh, network, put in their password, 
We'll go through the light sequence. Once that's done, the light goes out, then we can add it to the app. You can go and log in to the app and add devices. So very simple, you know, not very, not really difficult when it comes to that. Um, before we get into the troubleshooting, Rob, what do we, uh, you got any questions going on there? Um, no, nothing at the moment. Good, good, good. good. So yeah, this is uh, not a terribly long one. So hopefully this info helps you. Troubleshooting really, we don't see a lot when it comes to troubleshooting. A lot of the troubleshooting we do find comes from, you know, connection issues. You know, we got this thing a hundred feet away. We're just outside of that, right on the edge of the signal dropping off. Um, you know, maybe it's in the basement, you know, and then the modems somewhere totally out of range. But, you know, if you're having those connection issues where they're kind of sporadic, you know, that might happen. You know, we might need a booster or something like that. Unfortunately, we're not the cable company or the network provider, so we might have to recommend them calling those people. But we always want to check, use that mobile technician, make sure we got good signal strength. If it is a matter of having too many different um, devices on one channel, you know, there are things that the cable guys can do, or if the you know, IT, if they're good, familiar with computers, the homeowner themselves, they can change the channel that the signal's on. But that's way beyond us as AC guys. So. Um, I wouldn't worry about that too much. So that's going to be your biggest issue. Um, again, you know, the arrow, arrows pointing here, the LEDs, this is something that we've seen, uh, I've seen this a handful of times. Um, we've got a decent amount of guys out on the island where I am doing Wi-Fi right now. Had a couple complaints that there were no LEDs, only to find out the person that set it up or the homeowner turned the LEDs off on the app, but they didn't pay attention. They didn't understand that. So they changed modules and they ended up with the same results. So that is something we just got to pay attention to. We don't want to change a part just because the LEDs are out. We want to confirm that, you know, it's not just off on the, on the app. Um, and then again, the uh, connection lens, you know, making sure we have a good Wi-Fi signal, whether it's a router or something like that. We have seen, you know, my territory is, we're seeing a lot of people using mesh networks, stuff like that, where they're basically little boosters. So it kind of broadcasts it. It's not as strong from the, you know, the modem itself when you get far out. So we have had some connection issues there. Again, not module issues, but more of the Wi-Fi in the home. So a lot of this stuff pertains to in the house, not us so much. Um, when we get into the Antesis modules, one of the nice things they have you know, added to do or came through with is the LEDs. So this LED can tell us a lot, not just error codes, but normal operation. When I'm working this thing as a normal, you know, this thing's already connected and in, in use. If I'm in air conditioning mode, I'm going to get a blue light. If I'm in heating, I'm going to get a red light, right? If I've just got the fan operating, it's going to be a green light. You know, even if I send a signal on my app to turn it up three degrees in cooling, I'm going to see three lights flash blue. And if I'm in heating, it's going to three lights flash in red. So it's going to tell us everything that's going on. Even when we get into some error states here on the next slide, you're going to see if I had a Wi-Fi connection issue. So um, or WPS, if I'm using that button and it can't connect, I'm going to get a purple or magenta light. Um, if I'm trying to identify, it's going to be white. Green, if I can't configure. You know, if I'm having it problems connecting, you know, I'm going to get that red light. So these are all different indicators. We just want to under, understand what mode it's in. You'll be able to see that. So that's really going to wrap us up. You know, the, like I said, this is a pretty short one. Hopefully, you guys got some good information here. If you didn't catch some of this, you were kind of late getting in here. This will be up within, what do we say, Eric, a couple of two hours. We'll be up on here on the HVAC Insider site, along with all the other past webinars we've done and everything in the future coming. Um, you also find a training schedule. So we have a new one coming the 28th, Chris. So when we're kicking off, so the 28th, we'll have another one on there. So we're wrapping up pretty quickly here. Like I said, I think this is number six. We're finishing up today. So Tuesday, we'll be back at it again with the uh, top 10 installation, uh, service and installation errors. And then we'll be starting back over again with the multi-positional air handling. So with that, if there's any questions, Rob? Um, I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement. It says how to check power from the board to the Wi-Fi device. Um, doesn't really elaborate. Yeah, how to check power. Yeah, I have. To, I would have to confirm what we're looking for, but it's almost like a remote control. So however you would check, and I believe it's, I want to say it's 12 volts we're put into our remote controls. Yeah. So just like on a remote control, if we're testing that, go through the same troubleshooting techniques to check that. So that's a good question. Um, it's not something I've come, up, come across in a while. 
Um, I don't think I've ever come across not getting power to the module from the board, because if that was the case, the unit wouldn't be working at all because we wouldn't have any type of connection. We're not getting that voltage out of the board, then there's something, something's going on. You're gonna end up probably with a communication error or a remote control error before that. So, uh, good question though. Okay. Uh, so far, nothing else. All right. I don't see anything in this email. Yep, yep. Yep. So if you guys have any questions going forward, you have our emails there. You also have on that line sheet, don't forget to download those PDFs, the manual or the catalog and the line sheet. You, um, send it to any one of us in the contractor services group. We'll all be able to help you there. Uh, if there's no more questions, then we're going to say thank you. And we will see you on Tuesday.